autism, depression, fatigue, irritability, learning problems, moodiness, psychotic issues, slow thought processes. And do you know that most common in the world of allergens is dairy and gluten? One of the things we do in our brain camp is we do a gluten-free, dairy-free diet, teach people how to do wonderful recipes without gluten and without dairy because you, they are such high triggers for the brain to go into some of these things. Water is a natural antihistamine. Research shows that water is known to reduce histamines. One of the greatest researchers, and I recommend you Google him and look up his works because he has a lot of great books on water. He's done fabulous research and is responsible for giving us a lot of good information about what water does. Batman Helge is an MD and he says that water inhibits histamine production as well as its excess release. And he's the one that found in his research that water by itself had the strong antihistamine properties. Allergies are in epidemic proportions. I used to think in my practice, every single person that came in, now granted they came in because they were sick and they had issues, I wasn't dealing with a healthy population, but that everybody had allergies. But research says that two in every 10 now suffer from allergies. And the young are developing nervous system problems um, and their, their nervous systems are particularly vulnerable to any allergic or toxic overloads. Allergies lead to behavioral disorders such as hyperactivity, learning disabilities, etc. At least one in 10 ch child may react adversely to some common foods or additives. Dehydration produces more histamines. Histamines are produced exponentially when the body becomes more and more dehydrated. Your brain's health depends upon three main factors, and I want you to memorize these. Write them down. You gotta drink water. You gotta drink enough water. And you gotta drink the right kind of water. So when we say drink water, right now we need to be saying you need to be drinking water that hydrates the body. And what is that water that hydrates the body of the brain? Microclustered ionized alkaline water. Water recommendations, and these are only guidelines because I find that I need sometimes a lot more water than this. The minimum intake for children and adults is one half your weight in ounces. Think about this, folks. How many of our school children even drink two glasses of water a day? Very few. And parents say, well, here's your Coke, here's your milk, here's your, um, you know, your health drink, whatever those are on the market today. Here, you need some energy, take this. And they're making them more dehydrated. The body needs no less than two quarts of water and a half a teaspoon of sea salt every day to compensate for its natural losses in urine, respiration, and perspiration. Remember that the inside of the cell is water with salt in it. It's not just water. So I noticed I was on a weight loss diet recently, lost 10 pounds in a week, and water was a big part of it. And it was exciting. And I would take a teaspoon of salt and just, I love salt, so it wasn't hard, but um, it helped me. I mean, it was pushing it out. So it was kind of exciting. And I could see my body was needing more than a gallon a day to flush all the toxins that were moving. To really hydrate the system, you can drink equal to your weight in ounces. So if you weigh 150 pounds, you can drink 150 ounces. Not 150 pounds, folks. <laughs> sodas. How many of you are hooked on sodas? No, in the past we're hooked on sodas. Yeah. And you know, did you know it? No. Nobody ever taught you that. Like, they taste good. And you know, I need a refreshment, and I just ran, or I just had a stressful day, oh, give me a drink, or what do we do for people to be um, kind of hospitable? We give them drinks, right? And we have a whole assortment of things that are all dehydrating and all acid. If you substitute milk, juice, sodas, tea, coffee, alcohol, you have to drink even more alkaline water. You have to drink 12 ounces of water just to replace, remember that, 10 ounces of coffee. It takes 32 ounces of alkaline water at 9.0 pH to
to neutralize one eight ounce soda. Is that amazing? And you can experiment with it and see. Start pouring in and see how many glasses of alkaline water it takes to bring that pH up to alkaline. It takes 32. Water is, dehydration is caused by water not absorbing well. Water has to be microclustered, ionized, and alkaline to have the proper hydration to cells. And again, to the, to the average person, it's like, I don't even know what dehydration is. Well, now you can give them this information and let them see. They're going to all identify. How many of you have identified with some of these symptoms we've talked about tonight? And so the average person is going to get it. They're going to know, oh, I am dehydrated. I do need water. And I have not been educated about water. The average person, even in health, folks, even your practitioners in the natural health have not been educated about water because we haven't had the right kind of water readily available, but we do now. RO, distilled, purified, bottled acid waters, they're, they're all going to dehydrate and take water out of the body. So what do we drink? We drink only microclustered, ionized, alkaline water made with medical grade. Folks, I cannot emphasize enough how important this is. I cannot tell you the horrible cases that I've seen. I've seen people grow things like tumors on their um, body within two months of having machines that are ionizers that were half the price and were already putting toxic metals into their body and when they stopped the water the, the growth went away and the metals they were getting and the toxins so it is absolutely critical and just having solid plates isn't enough you've got to protect those metals and only medical grade platinum and titanium are safe for your body so they don't break down and you don't see that, folks, and most people don't know how to test it. So just drinking the water, you're not going to taste it. Bre begin drinking as soon as you wake up in the morning, 16 ounces of water. You want to drink all day long, every hour. Drink enough so that you get clear urine. One of the complaints is i got to run to the bathroom all day long. You know what I found out? That once your body gets rid of a lot of that toxins, you don't have to run so much anymore. So be blessed and thank God that you do have to run because you're moving toxins when you have to go frequently. And it will pass. And if you live in high altitudes, you've got to drink more water. And if you eat any convenience food, you have to drink more water because it sucks up the water. And if you exercise, if you walk up a hill, if you walk up the stairs, if you go downstairs and do the laundry, whatever, you're exercising some, you're using up more water. If you have a lot of stress, stress causes more dehydration and your metabolism is using up that water. Our next um, subject is about salt. Salt is, um, you should only use sea salt because salt expands the blood so it can reach all parts of the body and it helps to stabilize the blood pressure. And I take my clients who have high blood pressure and say, you know, you must have some salt in your diet and definitely get on the right kind of water. It helps you sleep better and it helps reduce mucus. Inadequate intake of water causes dehydration. But it's not just the inadequate intake. Drinking enough water is only one of the elements in rehydrating the brain and the body. You have to also have the right kind of water. It has to be microclustered, it has to be ionized, it has to be alkaline, it has to be made from solid medical grade plates and it may or you may not absorb enough water. I can't tell you how many people have said and they've even gone into their doctor and said, I'm drinking a gallon a day and I'm still dehydrated. And folks are getting the message out there and people are starting to hear and listen and say, well, I, I'm not hydrated.